All right, roll it. Snake Eater 3, His Law. Hello and welcome to the B-Movie Rollout, a place where we take a look at cheesy, low-budget action movies from the 1980s and remember why we left them there in the first place. Today we will conclude our look at the Snake Eater trilogy that stars Lorenzo Lamas. Whew. Sorry I'm late, what did I miss? Triple D from Nerdtown Chowdown? Now what are you doing here? I'm in Denmark right now. I had to steal a python for today's review. Wait, why, why did you do that? And why are you in Denmark? Hey, do I tell you how to do your job? You said you stole a snake. What is it that you think my job is? Alright, I imagine the Copenhagen police will be on me pretty quick, so time will be a factor in this review. Get together the following ingredients. A pound of vinegar. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you talking about eating a snake? I mean, you do realize there's no actual snake eating in this review, right? What? Snake Eater is the name of a Canadian film series that stars Lorenzo Lamas. What? Lorenzo Lamas. He was in Falcon Crest in the 1980s, and then later on he was in Renegade. Ugh, mother! Okay, this has gone on far enough. Let's take a reluctant look at Snake Eater 3, His Law. Roll it. The film begins with some of the stupidest intro credits I've ever seen. These credits reek of Lorenzo Lamas's motorcycle fetish, but I suppose they are appropriate because this movie involves biker gangs, but they are still retarded. Now I have to highlight one of the names on the list. That's right, this shit was based on a book. The book that this film was based on is called Rafferty's Rules, which is one of those pulp novel types that are mass-produced and often ghost-written. It's an incredibly easy read and quite harmless, but it is certainly not great literature, or even something a film should be based on. You want to know how I know this? Because I bought a copy. For four dollars. Now, as soon as I open the book, I immediately have to laugh. Literally the first words on the first page are Rule 34, sometimes good luck accomplishes more than hard work. And as any internet nerd knows, that's not what Rule 34 means. The next page shows that this book was dedicated to someone named Val, who never stopped believing. Apparently, she lived her life by the DVD case of Rocky Balboa. Don't stop Anyway, the book was written by W. Glenn Duncan, or as the lazy DVD case reads, Glenn Dukan. Speaking of the DVD case, we can see that they were just as lazy with this one as they were with the first one. It still lists movie and features as special features, it still refers to the DVD as a video cassette, and it still has that ominous exclusively distributed in Canada label. Furthermore, we can see that Soldier has a new sidekick, predictably named Cowboy. The book lists Cowboy as the most dangerous man on Earth. Are you kidding me? This guy doesn't look dangerous, period. He's what, all of four foot two? I mean, the guy's actual name is Miner. And he's supposed to be intimidating? The kid from Missing in Action 3 was more intimidating. I speak English, brother. The film begins with a robbery at a diner. Coincidentally, Soldier just happens to be walking by. Naturally, he saves the day, but his boss, Captain Cliché, 
isn't too pleased about it. I got it. a news flash for you, soldier boy. That's all. Now what I mean you. Crank that soul. Now what I mean you. Crank that soul. As of this moment, you're under suspension, pending the results of a hearing before a disciplinary board. So now, in all three movies, Soldier has been under suspension. In your badge, you're on suspension. Hey, uh, word on the street is you got your badge taken away. I want your gun, your badge, and your ID now. Again? Exactly. Even Soldier knows how dumb these movies are. Soldier then receives a phone call from a woman who saw a news report on Soldier's suspension. Kelly was unavailable for comment. That's news? He gets suspended like every other week. Soldier goes but, over uh, to the woman's house. It turns out that she and her husband have a proposition for him. Uh, we're looking for assistance from someone with your qualifications. The good ones or the bad ones? In this case, I think we'd want both. Yes, we want both your good looks and your poor acting abilities. The couple's daughter, Vivian, had been kidnapped, raped, and traumatized by a motorcycle gang. I'm not sure what's going on here. Am I supposed to ignore that, or are you going to tell me about it? Our daughter was kidnapped last year. Ten months later, she returned, and she hasn't been the same since. She was 30 pounds underweight, malnourished, anemic. Her mind had been affected, probably from prolonged forced drug abuse. She had a raging case of gonorrhea. Rage. The couple wants Soldier to hunt down and kill the guilty bikers. We want you to find these animals. And when you do, we want you to destroy them. No. Soldier says no, but what he really means is yes. Let me nose around first. From your past exploits, it doesn't seem to concern you whether you bring them in dead or alive. Personally, I prefer dead. It's up to them if they want to die. Soldier then goes to a bar to meet up with his new sidekick. Cowboy? I'm a cowboy On a steel horse I ride I want it, I want it. Soldier wants Cowboy to help him find the bikers. I want to work under your PI license. There's something in it for you, man. I just need you to do some light work for me. How about it, Cowboy? But before he can agree, a fight breaks out. The next day, Cowboy visits Soldier at his house. I could have taken a shit in the time it took you to get here. Some people call me the Space Cowboy. Yeah. I've been asking around. One of the Hell's Fury women wants to split up with her old man. But it's tough to walk out on one of these sleazoids. Especially when his name is Goose. She's been bad mouthing him. You might get something out of her. She works at her topless joint, the Dewdrop, down in the industrial. Soldier heads over to the strip club and starts asking questions. We then meet one of the villains. Hey, Freddy! Don't you say hello no more? Hello, Goose. Hey, Clyde. How's it going? Goose is played by professional wrestler Bam Bam Bigelow. Wait a minute. You wanted a professional wrestler for this role, and you got Bam Bam Bigelow? What, was a 90s Hulk Hogan too classy for this picture? Who the hell is Hulk Hogan? Hey, Goose! Did you get that name by sticking your thumb up your ass or somebody else's? Hey, man, Goose doesn't have a sense of humor. He should. He's pretty damn funny looking. Funny? <laughs> funny when I pull out your eye and skull fuck you! I think that is the first time that that term has ever been used cinematically. 